Keeping reptiles is expensive, but does it have to be? Good morning, reptilians. Welcome and welcome back to the channel. I'm Elle and this is Sales Reptiles. This week we are doing a video all about money saving tips when you have reptiles. I've done this video sort of a few times, but they're all like six years old now. So I'm going to be doing a lot of videos that I've done in the past because substantial time has passed since doing them. So we're going to do an updated thing. If you need it, there's a whole playlist here of how to save money on reptiles. So obviously there's gonna be more ways than just this to save money on when keeping your reptiles, but these are just the ones that I thought of when making this video. So if you have money saving tips, definitely make sure to leave them in the comments below. Before we get started, this video is sponsored by Heart Geckos. I had a whole little recording for this um, and the audio didn't record, but make sure to stay until the end to find out all about this awesome company. Let's get started. The first thing is buying fresh veggies in like bundles as opposed to pre-bagged. Pre-bagged veggies are a lot easier and they do save time, but they also cost more, at least here in the United States, they cost more to have vegetables that are already cleaned and cut as opposed to just buying a bundle. So for me personally, where I live, a bag of pre-cut vegetables like collard greens runs you about three to four dollars for a bag about this big, whereas a bundle is about a dollar and 38 cents as I think how much I paid last time. When you cut that yourself, usually you get more than you do in the pre-cut bag. Also, in my personal experience, buying that way and cutting them yourself and putting them in a bag yourself, they last longer than buying the pre-cut bags. On the same note as that, certain vegetables, you also have the option of getting them and cutting them up and freezing them, like things like butternut squash, just squashes in general, bell peppers, things like that. Obviously make sure you defrost them before you give them to your animal. You also can buy frozen vegetables in bags, like butternut squash. If you do this, just be careful, make sure you're getting the organic one that doesn't have any additives in it. It's just butternut squash or just acorn squash or whatever it is that you're getting. Of course, getting them, cutting it up yourself and freezing it yourself is going to be the cheaper option here. Freezing vegetables is a more long-term solution as opposed to getting vegetables and having them go bad. The next one is plant propagation. Plant propagation is just taking plants that have overgrown and cutting them correctly and growing them out to make new plants. I have a plant that I propagated on your back. This is a plant that I propagated from Cersei's tank. These leaves, they were already brown like this when they came out. They were actually growing outside of the mesh. A vine had squeezed between the mesh top of her tank and was growing. And I put these in water a few weeks ago. I'm not sure if you can see it, but there are roots and stuff that have begun to form. I don't do this. I'm not good at this. So I think I'm supposed to do a step next. Maybe at this point I'm supposed to plant them. So I'm not the best person to give advice on plant propagation, but it is a way to save money. If you do this, then obviously you have just gotten plants from the plants that you already had. You don't have to buy new plants. Buying feeders in bulk. This is a huge one. This one has been in every how to save money video that I've ever done because it is super important. Usually, no matter where you get them from, the more feeders you buy, the cheaper they are. And if you buy something from, let's say PetSmart, let's say you go and buy crickets from PetSmart. I know personally, if I go and buy like 30 crickets, it's more expensive than if I were to buy 51 crickets because 51 is when the pricing changes and it goes down. So make sure you pay attention to things like that. My biggest suggestion is to buy feeders online. If you buy them from places like Josh's Frogs or is it Rainbow Mealworm Feeders, um, if you're buying rats, buying big bulk orders of frozen rats, the more you buy, the cheaper it is. And also the more you buy, the less that shipping cost hurts. <laughs> if you're just buying 10 rats and you have to pay $20 to ship those rats, that hurts. If you're buying 100 rats and you pay $20 to ship those rats, that's much more helpful. <laughs> like it, it spreads out. It feels better than smaller orders. A lot of times online is cheaper. A lot of times online you're paying less than a penny per cricket. We're just gonna keep using crickets because that is the example that I have, <laughs> um, as opposed to going to a chain pet store and paying eight to 10 cent a cricket. Like that's a big, big difference. So also usually shop local like small owned pet stores family owned pet stores usually they also have deals too and they also have situations where you can tell them hey I need a bulk order of these bugs and it'll be pretty cheap because they'll just order it with their bulk order so that is something to look into as well shopping non-pet stores for pet supplies. I've done multiple videos about this, looking at different stores, looking at hardware stores and dollar stores and thrift stores, seeing how much 
pet supplies cost at these stores and it's always cheaper. When you go to a place like a chain pet store, they're charging pretty big markups on the items that they're selling because they're targeted towards pets as opposed to just buying that same item that may not have pet branding on it, but it's the same. Example, spray water bottles. They tend to charge about $13 to $15 for little misters about this big at pet stores. You go to Home Depot, you can get a big two gallon one for like $17 or a one gallon one for like between six and $8. It's the same thing, except for it holds more water. So in my opinion, I like the bigger ones because you don't have to fill them up as much and you can do a whole bunch of tanks instead of trying to, you can have your, I don't know. Again, I've done multiple videos about that. I will leave that playlist here. I think I have a playlist. It's probably that same playlist. I'll leave one of the videos here and then you can go from there, but much cheaper to do it that way if there's not reptile related branding on it. Same thing with substrates. If you go to a hardware store or a garden center and buy organic, pesticide free, chemical free, fertilizer free topsoils, you're gonna spend about two to three dollars for a giant bag as opposed to go to a pet store and spending upwards of 10, 15, 20 dollars for smaller bags of substrates. Speaking of hardware stores, dollar stores, things like that, you also have thrift stores and yard sales, uh, Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, used places to get those items. So obviously the items are gonna be used. They're not gonna be brand new out of the box, but it doesn't really matter. Just clean it and it's good to go. Obviously make sure that you're being safe if you're meeting strangers, getting these things, make sure you're meeting in public places and someone knows where you are and all those safety things. But that is a fantastic way to save so much money. You're going from spending probably 150 to two, $300 for a tank to spending usually about 50 bucks for pretty large tanks. And those tanks usually come with things that usually have hides and lights and or light fixtures things like that included much better deal if you can find them breeding your own cleanup crew this is very important if you are doing things like bioactive tanks because usually you do one bioactive tank and you want to do well all of the bioactive tanks. Breeding your own cleanup crew is so, 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 so easy. Springtails, super easy. You just get some coal in a Tupperware container, fill it half with water, and then you can either buy specialty springtail foods to put on top, or you can just put nutritional yeast on top or some rice and let it mold out and they will eat it. And then they breed and that's all. That's all you have to do. There's no heat involved. There's no lights involved. You just open that container maybe once a week to let some air in and that's it. <laughs> you, they just, they go crazy. And then you can separate them out into different containers. They'll breed, breed, breed until those containers are full and then you can put it in more containers and it's super easy. Isopods are a bit more difficult depending on what kind of isopods they are. Generally, you're gonna take a sterilite bin and put some soil in there, some substrate of some sort. You're gonna put dead leaves, driftwood, um, coconut bark, what's it called? Cocoa core? No. What is it called? <laughs> My brain has forgotten what they're called. This stuff. This stuff right here. You can put this stuff. Uh, yikes. You can feed them like vegetable scraps. You can, some people feed them like shrimp shells. Populate your little bin and then you can put them into tanks. Doing this makes those price tags, those clinic proof price tags are pretty steep. It makes those price tags a lot more digestible because you now have bought something one time and you have like an infinite supply of cleanup crew. Speaking of breeding your own cleanup crew, you can also breed your own feeders. This obviously is going to vary depending on what type of feeder we're talking about, but for the most part, it's super easy. You should be setting up a habitat for your feeders anyway, because they need to be gut loaded and properly cared for before they are fed to your animals. Usually a couple of things just need to be tweaked and they will breed. So mealworms, nothing needs to be tweaked. Just don't refrigerate them. A lot of the mealworm lids say to refrigerate them. You just don't refrigerate them. They'll turn into beetles. They will mate and reproduce and produce tiny little mealworms. Just make sure you keep them fed and they will breed. Things like crickets and doobie roaches do need heat in order to breed. So they'll be set up and they have to have some sort of warmth in order to get them to breed. For me personally, my doobie roaches just breed by themselves. I don't put a heat pad on them. It's just when it gets warm, they breed. So yeah, you don't have to do anything special for those. Crickets need some sort of loose substrate in order to put their eggs, deposit their eggs, I think. I don't know, I've never bred crickets from my very narrow understanding. Superworms can't touch other superworms in order to turn into beetles in order to reproduce. So if you want to produce your own feeders, that's gonna save you a lot of money. Just do more research into how to do that and you can do it. You got it. 
And the last one is to just buy the animal's final size tank instead of sizing up. So a lot of times people will get a tiny little baby or dragon and they'll put it in a 20 gallon tank and then they'll move up to a 40 gallon tank and then they'll move up to a four foot tank. But if you just go ahead and start with their final size tank, you, yes, it does seem like it costs a lot in the moment. You've cut out the need to buy those size up tanks, which in the long run is going to save you money because obviously you don't have to buy other tanks. This can be done with any animal. Some animals do get a little shy if there's a lot of space. If this is the case, just fill it with a whole bunch of enrichment. Make them feel like there's not a super crazy amount of open area where a predator could come in and get them. Lots of hides, lots of leaves. If that doesn't work, you always can just section half of that tank off and take the section thing out when the time comes. So using like poster board, PVC, acrylic, things like that, and just section it off until the time comes to undo that. And a lot of times that's it. Then you have not spent money on all those in between size tanks and you have a happy animal and you don't have to also stress about when it is time to size them up because that is more money that's gonna have to be spent to size them up, to get more lights, to get more substrate, to fill that new size tank up. So do it all at the beginning and you won't have to worry about it. And just very quickly, a couple of things not to do when you're trying to save money. Number one, don't get feeders from outside. Outside is filled with parasites and they could be covered in pesticides. We don't know what those bugs have on them coming from outside. So uh, obviously I saw like a crazy video of like a whole worm coming out of a cricket's body and it was so gross. Another thing, don't get feeders from like bait shops. Bait shops are not gonna have high quality gut loaded bugs because they're literally made to go into a hook and throw to catch fish to throw into the river. So make sure you're not getting them from bait shops. Make sure you're getting them from somewhere that is for reptiles. And don't try to save money on heating your reptiles tank by putting the tank in front of a window. This is bad. Don't do this. The heat is just going to get trapped inside of that tank and overheat that tank and it's going to be really bad, really bad situation for your animal. Also, obviously in saving money, don't skimp out on lights. Don't wait too long to replace UVB lights because the output will either plummet or it will skyrocket and become harmful for your animal. So don't skimp out on lights. Don't skimp out on things that are super, super important in the name of saving money. Remember, the animal's health always comes first. We need to do everything that we can to make sure that animal is healthy because because we are the only way that they can be healthy. We are their lifeline. But that is it. That is all that I have for this week's video. Hopefully it was helpful in helping you save money uh, when keeping reptiles because keeping reptiles can be pretty expensive. Hopefully this helped. And again, if you have any other tips, make sure to leave them in the comments below for anyone else that may be reading those. And yeah. As I said at the beginning of this video, this video is sponsored by iHeartGeckos. If somehow you have not heard of iHeartGeckos before, this is a phenomenal company that makes these really cool kits that you can actually use to turn any tank, any glass, regular tank into a front opening tank for your reptiles or amphibians or arachnids or whatever it is that you need it for. Super cool. I've been using these for a very long time and they hold up very well. They are definitely an inexpensive option if you're looking to get a front opening tank for your animal. If you do happen to order one of these, make sure you leave Elle's Reptiles in the How Did You Hear About Us box. That way they know that you guys are coming from here. Thank you so much to our Geckos for continuing to sponsor these videos. As always, if you haven't already, please feel free to follow me on my socials and like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications every single time I put on a video, which is every Sunday and some Wednesdays. This week's Instagram shout out is here, and this week's shout out is here. Thank you so much for liking and following, subscribing and commenting and sharing and all that jazz. You are the bee's knees. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye. Wait, is it not on? What was that? What was that? Oh, it is on. That was a weird light. So why did that pair them so close? Test. This all needs to come way back. Why are we zoomed in? Don't do that. Okay. A lot of minutes of nonsense. All right, so. So far in the Patreon poll, how to save money is winning, so. So let's start with that. All right. Um, I'm already sweaty. It's crazy. It is 50 degrees outside. Whew, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do five videos today. Okay. And the last one is to buy the animal's final size tank beef in the uh, My camera has about to die. And